uh, thanks for everybody for coming, number one. Uh, number two, my name is Eli, your last name is pronounced Nahe. Uh, i give you some background. Uh, I've been doing strictly fuel injection auto enhancements. Um, I had a company called Carpro Motorsports in Michigan. All we did is fuel injection from day one. We opened in 1989, and uh, unfortunately, due to the bad economy, we shut down in 2004. Uh, I took this job with uh, Presto High Performance as the Excel Digital Fuel Injection Sales Manager and also the Image Program Manager back in uh, September of 06. And uh, thus, here we are. Uh, today, I'm not going to go into all how the system works and all that stuff, but what I am going to show you, for the, for the some of you who are here, certainly for business, please raise your hand just for a second. Uh, Possibly you want to sell the product, install it. And for the, some of you that want to install it on your vehicle, possibly. Anybody in here that is in here for that reason? Okay. And the other one, I'm sure you're here just to learn about EFI, whether it's our product or EFI in general. I go over some of the things so everybody kind of understands what's going on. Uh, if you have any questions during anything I say, please raise your hand. Don't feel, uh, don't be shy, I should say. <clears throat> first thing is first. Uh, I am. Again, the sales manager for Excel Digital Fuel Injection. EFI uh, came into business roughly about 87, and uh, so it's been probably one of the longest uh, EFI aftermarket companies around. And uh, through the years, you know, they've uh, really uh, brought things forth as in how easy it is to do EFI. Some people are still kind of like uh, scared, possibly, is a word you can use. Or they're like, man, I don't know if I can deal with this. Some of the things I'm going to show you later on today is going to change all that. First thing is first. Uh, first, BFI, as like I said, one of the things that uh, we, we, we know by going to racetracks, by talking to people, you know, it is a very respected name. Uh, you know, people still, believe it or not, uh, when you go to a track, some guy says, well, I got a BFI in my car. Those three little letters, even though somebody else's system, they don't know. And you said, well, I got a DFI. Just a letter that's been around for so long that it's stuck in people's mind. You want to copy this? Roughly 44 EFI companies out there have actually stolen our, some of our designs, and they, we haven't like, sued them or anything, but you know, just to let you know that people do copy us. Uh, it's very user friendly. Very consistent when it comes to ET, the way the engine runs, the way your gas mileage is. People brag it about constantly. You go to the track, you always got, hey man, this is your stuff, let me show you, it's great. You know, we always hear that. One of the things is uh, we design our product strictly to make it easy to use for the end user. That's one of the things that really have, has not been uh, told about or noticed in, in a long time. I prefer to talk about that because it is the truth. Once you understand the system, I'm not saying once you learn how to use it, I said once you understand it. Learning how to use it and understanding it is two different things. And I'll explain a little later. Performance-wise, believe me when I tell you, it's one of the best systems out there for, for the price. We, we got packages. We equip it with the best, you know, uh, roughly parts not available. A lot of times it's right out of the OEM. We have the best software, and then we also have the best safety measures, and i explain that, that's very important. Why fuel injections over a carburetor? I don't know if you guys have, do have a business, people ask that, people ask me that all the time. Easy starting, in all weather conditions. I had an 800 horsepower Trans Am, as you see there, on motor, 278 at 50 camshaft, I live in Michigan. On purpose, I never pull the motor out at the end of the season. I'd leave it in. Customers come, 20 degrees outside. I reach in, just hit the button. Don't even touch the accelerator. The thing runs like an everyday car. Starts up and idles. Try that with carburetor. Really. <coughs> Better lighting control with all engine combos. So whether you have a 210 and 50 cam, a four-cylinder, straight six, doesn't matter. Improve the acceleration and throttle response. That's a huge key, whether it's over a carburetor, over our competitor's EFI system. And I'll explain that a little later. Improved fuel economy by 20% plus. On an average vehicle, you will see 20% improvement over carburetor. On a vehicle that the carburetor is way off, you'll see probably 50%. We 
We had a gentleman that had a 502 crate motor and a Chevelle, wanted to do the hot rod car cruise two years ago. He put the system on, he was, now this is his claim, he went from 8 to 16 miles to the gallon. That's huge. Reduced emissions. Even though it is not carb approved, by utilizing the system, you will guarantee yourself way better emissions. So for you guys that are looking to go green, that's something to think about. Increased horsepower and torque. That's always a guarantee. I always hear this, oh, it's never more powerful than a carburetor. I can prove that person wrong. I'm not a betting guy, but I will bet money on it. Anybody that said EFI system will not make more power than a carburetor. You have to reach out the carburetor. No one has to be worried about reach out especially with a wide band or two. You tell it you want to be a 13 and want to wide up the throttle, it will put you there. Go not need to carry spare car parts anymore. The people that you don't have the big blocks or the 1050 dominators want to cruise up and down, that's all gone. AC clutch control, fan control, knock sensor control for the guys that just want to strictly uh, street vehicle. Better control over any power adder, especially nitrous. How many people have seen that at the track? Somebody hits it and it goes the carburetor right through the hood. That's all gone. I made a mistake one time. This is my fault. I ordered the nitrous plate with the bars flipped the other way, burned four holes in the back. I put a hole through the block and didn't blow anything up as it through the hood. It just it burned up. What was it? No need to buy a different carburetor just because you change the cam it has. We all know that. We all say, you know, I, I have a 650 Howie, and guess what? I'm going to go to a hat that pulls 30 more CFM, and I'm going to put a small stick that's 20 more on the, on the intake. Now that 650 is no good. You pull it out, you've got to spend another $600 on a carburetor. Now with this system, our pro ramp kit comes with a 1200 CFM throttle body. You can run that from 400 horse all the way to 700 horse. Now, everybody says, well, geez, 1,200 CFM. There's a huge difference between a 650 Howie, which is wet, is flowed wet, and a throttle body that's flowed dry. If, you, if anyone here has a flow bench, we'll get a 750 Howie, pull the legs out of it, the fuel leg, and this flow dry, you'll get probably at least 1,000 plus CFM. An 850 will flow even more. See what I'm saying? So, the cool thing about it is, and think of it this way, on, on a carburetor, we always need sometimes a higher stall speed converter. Why? Because the cam comes in at a certain RPM, and you need to be able to draw the fuel through the carburetor. And if that RPM is kind of like too close to the stall speed, what happens? We get a bog because the fuel takes forever to get down. The EFI, the fuel's already right over the valve. So you get as much air as you want, it doesn't matter. We used to do tests years ago and we were learning about that stuff. We literally, just to make sure that the throttle body is worth, you know, or done enough, maybe not big enough, we used to on the dyno go walk pull the throttle body off, see what the horsepower we had and set it up. You know, that's why we learned it. Crazy, I know people say, you did that right next to the motor? Yes, you did. Why do you sell EFI over anything else? Over a carburetor or over somebody else's EFI system? We all know there's multiple companies out there. There's companies that they'll sell you a kit for uh, under 300 bucks. You're going to assemble it yourself, solder all that stuff. There's companies out there that cost $30,000 for a kit. So why so why so different? Well, multiple reasons. Sometimes it's you're just paying for the name. Sometimes you're paying because some companies will only give you X, and then if you want this other thing, it's another thousand. If you want this other thing, it's another thousand. That's how they that's how they sell their system. 